In the kitchen, the term cast iron generally refers to molten iron that's been casted into a specific shape. The most popular shape probably being the cast iron skillet. Isn't he a cute little guy? So some people shy away from cast iron because maybe they hear it's too hard to maintain, it's too heavy, it's impossible to clean. Just to name a few of the many popular conundrums that I've heard. No matter the case, I'm here to tell you that cast iron isn't as hard to work with as you may have heard. Matter of fact, once you learn just a few basic tips about cast iron and apply them in your kitchen, I'm confident that you're going to be cooking with cast iron for the rest of your life. And yeah, I understand that's probably quite the statement, but I'm serious. So today in this video, we're going to go over how to season a cast iron skillet and, you know, what the hell seasoning even really is. Then we're gonna move into how to maintain, care for, and cook on the stuff. Okay, I think I covered it all. Let's do this. Right, so as mentioned, in the kitchen, cast iron refers to cookware made from iron that has been melted down and casted into a specific shape. These are a few pieces of my cast iron cookware from my collection. And as you can tell, cast iron is not exclusive to pan form. Cast irons can be shaped into anything from, you know, cast iron grills to Dutch ovens, combo cookers, planchas, and yes, skillets. Oh, and real quick, let's touch on carbon steel. Carbon steel is a close cousin to cast iron. Uh, carbon steel pans are similar to cast iron in that they both charge with and distribute heat very well, which makes for very evenly heated cooking surfaces. Carbon steel is lighter than cast iron and heats up and cools down quicker, making it a little more responsive. It also needs to be seasoned like a cast iron and totally rusts out if you don't take care of it, but we'll talk about that soon. There are pros and cons to both carbon steel and cast iron, but carbon steel probably deserves a video of its own, so let's move on. Since we're talking cast iron, it's probably a good idea to cover enameled cast iron too. Enameled cast iron is just cast iron that's been treated with an enamel finish. Similar to tradish cast iron, enameled cast iron comes in all shapes and sizes. The enamel layer makes for sort of this smooth, non-porous surface that does not rust. Enameled cast iron comes in many color options and does tend to be a bit pricier than standard cast iron. Because of the enamel, uh, that cast iron doesn't usually have to be seasoned like a standard cast iron would be, which takes us to our next topic, seasoning. Alright, so I'm not going to pretend to be Bill Nye and get too scientific, but technically a cast iron seasoning is the thin coating of oil that has been bonded or polymerized to the cast iron surface through heat. In layman's terms, if you were to zoom into the surface of a cast iron, you'd see a bunch of tiny little pores. When the pan heats up, these small pores open up, and once those pores open up, we have the opportunity to fill them and create a smooth non-stick surface, which is where the oil comes in. Adding fat, or in our case oil, to the surface of the hot cast iron fills in the pores. As it's heated, the oil transforms into a hardened plastic-like coating through the polymerization process. This coating gives the cast iron its non-stick surface and also helps keep it from rusting out. Okay, so now that the seasoning has been demystified, let's talk about exactly how we season a cast iron. Whether it's a cast iron fresh from the manufacturer or an older one that needs a little bit of love, I prefer to season my cast iron myself. <laughs> I spent the past week using and abusing, neglecting and disrespecting this fine looking cast iron skillet. If you can see right here, there's so much gunk on it from the old seasoning that it's actually like hardly rusting, which is very scientifically impressive. <laughs> Though your cast iron might not be as dirty as this one, the idea behind seasoning it is the same and goes something like this. Preheat the oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit or 332 Celsius. Place a rack in the middle of your ovo, then lay a piece of tinfoil on the bottom uh, below that rack. The tinfoil here is going to help catch any potential oil droplets or other falling stuff. Now we need to clean the cast iron thoroughly, so if your cast iron is new, hot soapy water and the rough side of a sponge will do the trick. On the other hand, if your cast iron is gunked out and has crusties all over it, it's probably a good idea to whip out some steel wool and coarse salt. The steel wool will help scrape off most of the carbonized bits and old seasoning, while the coarse salt kind of supplements as an abrasive. And there's really no way to dance around this. If your cast iron's super gross, you're just going to have to use some elbow grease, a little bit of salt, and sheer willpower. <laughs> the steel wool does help too though. Now if your pan is super gnarly, very rusty or gunky, it can be restored and there are a few simple tricks that you can do, but I'm not going to go over that in this video. Uh, I'll do my best to leave some helpful links for you below. Oh shit. <laughs> oh no! Oh. Once the cast iron is cleaned up, dry it completely by placing it over high heat on the stove. This does two things. One, it'll burn away any moisture, and two, it'll heat the cast iron up, opening its pores and priming it for seasoning. This next part might seem intimidating, but if you use oven gloves or other protection and respect the cast iron, you will be just fine. Not to mention, if you take good care of your cast iron moving forward, you'll rarely ever have to do this again straight up. 
Once it's ripping hot, we're going to coat the entire cast iron with a high smoke point oil. I'm a grapeseed boy, but you know, you can use whatever oil you want. Vegetable oil or flaxseed oil are other very popular choices that work very well. Stay away from anything that has anything that can burn in it. So no high quality olive oil, no flavored oils, you know, it would just be a waste and it wouldn't work well for seasoning. To ensure optimal oil rub ability, I like to rig up some folded paper towels on a pair of tongs and kind of create this like oil paintbrush thing. But if you're wearing oven gloves, you can also just hold the paper towel, you know, with your hands. It's totally fine. Just be very careful. All right, so this thing, smoky smoky. I'm gonna put on my gloves. I'm very careful now. Bring it over here. And it's really important not to rub in too much oil. We're going for a very thin coating of oil here. There should be no oil droplets or any pools anywhere in the pan. Adding too much oil to the pan can make the seasoning a goopy, sticky mess. Uh, no bueno, definitely like take your time, make sure all that oil's rubbed off. No matter how you decide to do it, rub the entire cast iron with the oil. This sort of initial full body coating will help keep the cast iron from rusting out. Once coated, but not too coated, place the cast iron facing down on the middle rack of the oven. Orienting the pan face down is probably a good idea because it will discourage any oil pooling and buildup. Bake the cast iron for one hour, then turn off the heat and let it cool down completely inside the oven. Once cooled, your cast iron is seasoned and ready for cooking. And it's totally optional, but I recommend repeating this process a total of two to three times to really reinforce that seasoning. A good rule of thumb for cast iron is cooking with fat will help strengthen your cast iron seasoning over time. Think of fat as kind of like cast iron food in a way. Sort of weird, but yeah. Any oils or animal fats or butter, you know, that sort of thing. Any fat is going to really make the seasoning a lot stronger over time. Alright, so your cast iron is now seasoned up and ready to go, so let's cook on it. A well-seasoned cast iron surface should act similarly to a non-stick pan. Not quite as non-sticky as a non-stick pan, but still quite non-sticky. A cast iron skillet is great for frying, searing, baking, roasting, or you could even throw it on the grill. There are a lot of things that you can do with cast iron, so we're not going to go over each individual food. However, uh, there are some best practices to keep in mind that I'd like to touch on. For example, when searing, it's super important to bring the cast iron up to heat before you cook on it. Contrary to popular belief, cast iron does not heat up evenly from the jump. Once you give it time to charge up with heat, that changes though. Give the cast iron time to charge up with heat and it's one of the most evenly heated cooking surfaces out there, period. Make sure to preheat the cast iron over medium, medium high heat for 5 to 10 minutes before searing on it. You want that boy nice and hot. Another point of confusion that people have when thinking about cast iron is that it's not okay to cook with acidic foods. Uh, many people believe that cooking with acidic foods like tomatoes or wine could react with the iron leaving nasty food that's both unsafe to eat and metallic tasting. Let it be known that for the most part, cooking with acid is okay in a well-seasoned cast iron. But that right there is the key, well-seasoned. If the pan doesn't have a solid seasoning on it, there is a chance that it could react with the food. However, it's probably not going to kill you. My pans are pretty well-seasoned, so I don't have a problem working with acidic ingredients, but a good rule of thumb that I cook by when working with cast iron is to avoid long cooking projects that involve acidic ingredients. Like, for example, I wouldn't simmer a tomato-based sauce for hours in a cast iron skillet or a Dutch oven, but, you know, I would use wine to deglaze the pan to make a quick pan sauce for a steak or something. You feel me? Oh, and another point worth mentioning that might be a little obvious is cast iron is pretty heavy. Unless your wrist joints are reinforced by diamonds or your forearms are just completely diced, it's not going to be easy to saute any food on a cast iron skillet with one hand. When working with a cast iron, I generally keep it on the stove, but if I do need to grip it, I like to use a dish towel to kind of help beef up the handle, making it easier to grip, and it also helps you, you know, protect you from burns. So definitely use a rag. I definitely recommend that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right on. Okay, steak and eggs be in the belly. Uh, we've cooked on our cast iron, now it's time to clean up. To properly clean and maintain your cast iron, first let it cool down completely before handling. We know that cast iron is known for its ability to hold heat, so this could take some time. Don't be a hero, be patient and let the pan cool down. I like to keep a container of my nasty oil uh, just to help kind of like save my drain's life, but you know, you can do your thing. Wait till it cools, then throw it away or pop it in a jar like me. Most people don't know this, but you actually can use soap to clean cast iron and it will not mess with the seasoning. Soap removes oil and the seasoning bonded to your cast iron is more like a hard enamel and less like an oil. Therefore, soap shouldn't screw with the seasoning all that much. But all said, if maintained, a well-seasoned cast iron rarely should ever need soap. I use this hard piece of plastic to scrape off any carbonized burnt on bits and if I need to, a scotch pad to clear away gunk. 
I know, it seems pretty gimmicky to buy a branded piece of plastic, but you know, these things are like four for six bucks and I use them to clean all my other pots and pans, so I'd say it's a great buy. If the food is really latched on, I'll give it a spot treatment with some salt and just some elbow grease running under hot water. The salt works as an abrasive. Once clean, do not air dry the cast iron or let it sit in the sink. Water and air will make your cast iron very sad and very rusty. Instead, pop the pan on the stove over high heat to cook off any excess water. Once dry, drop in a touch of oil, use some paper towels to kind of rub that oil in, making sure that there's no pooling or excess oil buildup. I just use some bunched up paper towel and really try to make sure everything's dry and the oil's distributed. Super simple, once the pan begins to just barely smoke, cut the heat and let the pan cool on the stovetop before you store it. Essentially, proper cast iron cleanup is just kind of doing a mini seasoning. If you keep your cast iron dry, clean, and lightly oiled, it should remain healthy for a very long time. The more you cook with the pan and the more fat you use, the stronger the seasoning will become, so use your cast iron, people. Though it's been cooked on for a very long time, the cast iron renaissance is certainly upon us. Whether you're a professional who just sort of nerds out over the idea of handmade cast iron, or you're looking for something quality but still affordable to get the job done, there's definitely a cast iron out there for you. As far as cast iron pan recommendations go, in my opinion, you can't really get much better than ye old trusty lodge. These things are super reasonably priced, and like most cast irons, they'll last forever if you respect them. Either the 10 inch or the 12 inch should do well but I really like this larger 12 inch because it's a little more versatile, you can do a little more with it. Now if you're somebody who's looking for a more artisanal piece of cookware, looking to spend a little more money for something a little nicer, I really like what Finex is doing out of Portland. They make some really, really beautiful stuff, some really cool looking stuff, functional stuff, so I recommend you check them out if you're into that type of thing. And as far as enamel Dutch ovens go, I really dig the look and feel of these Staub Dutch ovens. I really like my white one. It's very pretty. I'm very into it. But other brands like Le Creuset are excellent choices too. Uh, however, both Le Creuset and Staub can be a little pricey, so I'll do my best to include an alternative budget option for you in the video description. See, look at that. That's it's really not that hard, you know, totally doable. Oh, uh, Jesus, I'm having flashbacks. I remember when I was a dishwasher, I used to have to clean these mini cast irons that would serve queso fundido, so I would literally have to like pick away and chisel away at hard cheese with a painter's knife, run the thing through the Hobart, take them out, and then reach into this kind of like gnarly used oil jar with a rag and sort of swab them out and make sure that they're shiny and oiled up for storage. Ugh. But I mean, you know, let that story be a testament to how awesome cast iron is. Even after that traumatic experience, I'm still coming back for more. Anyways, I hope this video cleared up any confusion and answered your questions regarding cast iron and cast iron cookware. As usual, if I did not get to any of your questions, drop a comment below. I try to respond to each and every one of you. And I know I say this a lot, but if you dig these videos, be sure to check me out on Instagram and TikTok if that's your cup of tea. And I shall see you next week. Toodaloo. This boy is rubbing on me. This is the boy. His name is Matt. Let me see all over the camera. He's gonna be a star.